You're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. You'll be amazed at all these wild but true situations that others have found themselves in. Because on this show, you'll hear uncensored, unbelievable stories from the world of real estate. I'm Lee Brown. Let's dive right in. Before you get the rest of the story, I'd love to share a quick message from today's sponsor. Hey, y'all. Just going to take a quick break from this conversation to let you know about the sponsor of today's episode. That sponsor is, well, frankly, it's me. It's Lee Brown University. Look, it's no secret that real estate is crazy competitive, getting more so every day. And when the pie doesn't get any bigger, but the people wanting a piece of it do, you've got to figure out a competitive advantage. And that's why I created Lee Brown University. It's everything you need from soup to nuts, cradle to grave, point A to point B, whatever point B is. Each of you has different goals. So maybe you're a new to the career realtor or you're a super experienced pro who can't figure out uh, that next level. There's something in my course that's going to help you break through. It's designed for you before I even met you. So enroll in Lee Brown University today. You go to www.leebrownu.com and I'll see you there. Now, back to this amazing content. Hey, so with that, hey friends, welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. I'm Lee Brown, I'm with Jamil Gamgee over here, and he's not Amish and Mexican, and he is middle-aged, though his beard does give that away, but that's why I color mine. We don't have to tell stories. This is very exciting, but I'm copying my favorite podcast, Dan Bongino, and also I do love Joe Rogan's show. So here we are. If you're listening on your regular podcast app, we're still over there. And if you're a video person, you have missed three and a half years of goodness. So go get caught up (laughs) and just visit us in both places. Subscribe in both places and give us five stars and you'll find out why here in a minute. So we like to talk about the angles of real estate that nobody talks about because HGTV is totally chicken to talk about the good stuff. And HGTV would never have said out loud Amish and Mexican. They probably would have been afraid of harming the Amish demographic that doesn't have televisions and Mexicans are probably working too hard and watching telenovelas. They're not watching this anyway, so we're good. So Bill, tell them what you do, what you do around real estate, what they should know about you. Oh, fantastic. So I'm Jamil Damji, guys. I'm the president co-founder of this company here, Keegley. We are a real estate investment firm. Our business model is essentially buying distressed properties. We help homeowners out of terrible situations. And we also help investors find fantastic deals so that they can reposition those properties, beautify them and bring them back to the retail market. So we are a volume you would call real estate wholesaler. We do anywhere between 65 to 85, 90 houses a month. We are in 12 markets in the United States and we are a couple of months away from franchising. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, super exciting. Is Charlotte one of your 12 markets? No, Charlotte's not one of our 12 markets that we're in currently, but it will 100% be a really, really strong hotbed for our franchises. So we will be in the Charlotte marketplace by, I'd say, April, May. So who are you going to talk to first in Charlotte? I 1,000% am going to talk to Lee Brown (laughs) because you you are the coolest person in Charlotte that I know. And you don't know anybody here, but obviously because... I'm saying my readers off, so I look younger. There we go. All right, so tell us, first of all, I love that you say reposition instead of flipping because I think flipping is a pretty negative term for a process that's necessary because if you have a dilapidated house, it needs to be refreshed so that we don't lose that housing stock because one thing nobody's talking about in the housing affordability crisis that's going on is it's really a housing availability crisis. And when you think about that, when we talk about the need for rooftops, there's a certain percentage of houses in the nation every year that just go away because they're dilapidated, they have deferred maintenance, and somebody who's correctly taking care of a property or bringing it back is helping solve that housing stock problem. So talk to us a little bit about how you got into this, what are the steps that you take, what do you look for, you know, stuff. Awesome. So I got into it by accident. In 2002, I used to be an owner of a media company where we were some of the pioneers of marketing websites for small businesses. And so what we would do is we would get our yellow pages out and we would call business owners 
Now and they know we're middle-aged, by the I way, because we know yellow pages. I said yellow pages. <laughs> and like, oh, my God, I dated myself. <laughs> so we would pull out our big yellow pages, and we would call down and call these business owners and ask them if they knew what the Internet was and if they'd be interested in buying a website. And we would sell these websites for $600. Now, ultimately, what I learned through that process is it actually cost us $700 to make a website that we sold for $600. So every time I made a sale, I lost a hundred bucks. So that was the business I was in, right? So I'm in this business and I overhear a conversation with a business partner he's having with his father. And they're talking about buying these old houses in the inner city of where I live. This is all happening in Calgary, Alberta, Canada to give some context to the viewers and listeners. And so, and by the way, if you're an American, you should know the Calgary and Alberta market is very heavily driven by the oil sector. And so it's going to be driven by what's happening in energy. So carry on Jamil. Awesome. And thank you for knowing that. So I overhear this conversation and my business partner's father is saying, you know, if we could just get more building lots, we would crush it. And I hear them talking about making a profit of around $160,000 and my mind just exploded at this point. So I walk in and I ask, how can I get involved? And they try to shoo me away, but I'm not taking no for an answer. And I learned that they just need to get more of these building lots so that they can do more duplexes. And so the next morning I'm walking my dog and I walk by a for rent by owner. I'm not in real estate. I have no real estate experience. I'm just the kind of person who connects the dots in his mind, right? And so I'm walking by this house that I actually had tried to rent uh, about three months earlier, but the lady's rental price was just out of my budget and I couldn't do it. And so I noticed it was still for rent and I got out my, it was, I was working off of a Motorola flip phone at the time. I got my Motorola flip phone out. I called the seller or the homeowner and I asked, look, I know you've been trying to rent this house for a few months. You've been unsuccessful. Would you potentially want to sell it? And she said, for the right price. I asked what that price was. She said 350 grand. And I quickly got off the phone. I finished walking my dog, ran to the office, asked my business partner how much his dad would buy a building lot for, and he said 400. And so I have a $50,000 problem now, right? Because I know I can buy this house for 350. I know he'll buy it for 400, but I don't know how to do it. I'm completely lost. (laughs) I I have no money. I have no contract experience. I'm just in this conundrum. And being the type of person I am, I can't let that sit. And so I get out my yellow pages and I start calling down real estate attorneys and I just call all of them until a secretary doesn't answer the phone. There's this one real estate attorney who was just getting started. His name is David Steed. He had no secretary, so he picked up his own phone. And so there was no gatekeeper for me to get hung up on by. And I told him what my situation was and he said, oh, that's easy. All you need are two contracts, one where you're the buyer and you write your name and or assignee and a second contract where you're the seller and you sell it to that buyer you've got for the higher price, then bring me those two contracts and a few weeks later, I'll give you a check. And I couldn't believe how simple that was, right? So I did that and I got my check and I was hooked. So that's how I got into the business. Here, let me add a caveat here. What Jamil's talking about is totally legal because he disclosed all things to all parties. Correct. This is not legal when you make up straw buyers and that's what happened during the big downturn or right before it. So if you want to do assignment contracts, be legal, be legit, be Correct. full disclosure because this is nothing wrong with hunting for deals, Correct. but be fair. Okay, carry on. Yep. So of course, all those disclosures were made And uh, I just got completely hooked on the business model because for a hustler with no experience and no knowledge but time, it's an amazing way to get involved, right? And so I started a business basically finding these specific building lots for builders and I would sell those. And then ultimately I noticed that they were doing projects on apartment buildings. So what I would do is I'd find old apartment buildings where they were converting them into condos And I started flipping those and I would make around $100,000 every time I'd sell one of these buildings. Now, these developers were happy to pay my fee because they didn't have the time to hunt for the inventory. Exactly. And so my job was essentially solving many problems. A, one for the current owner who was tired and ready to cash in. One for the developer who needed raw material to do his thing and just connecting those pieces made me wealthy at the time. 
And then 2008 happened and we were involved in projects. I'd actually convinced my parents. Essentially what I did was I saw what the developers were doing and I got jealous. I wanted to be involved and copy what they were doing because I thought the grass was greener on their side. And I took all of the money we made and I doubled down. I put it all down on deposits and down payments. We bought four buildings. I brought my mom and dad to the closing table and I asked them to co-sign construction loans. In 08? Um, 08, yep. And I bankrupted myself and my entire family. It's okay. The president's been bankrupt and he turned out okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that was tough. We all became homeless. So I ended up moving into a two bedroom, one bath apartment with my mom, my dad, my sister, my niece, our 150 pound dog and my cat. And we all went from doing really well to living with each other and starting over. Then I moved to Los Angeles to become a comedian. How'd that work out? I'm not a comedian. (laughs) You're the Amish Mexican with the salt and pepper beer. Yes. I think the punchline is that I went to Los Angeles to become a comedian. So, (laughs) So that happened. But in that process, I learned a lot and I was always stuck to real estate. So I'm living in Los Angeles and I've got my eyes on the Phoenix market because after the crash, I could literally buy a brand new condo, something built in 2005, two bedroom, two bath, completely. All the finishes were granite, espresso cabinets, like it was hip for the time. And I could buy these condos for $25,000 a door. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Nothing. And I could rent them for 850. And so I got my feet wet back in the real estate game by getting involved in purchasing at the bottom and have been slowly crawling my way back up to today, which now myself and with three other partners, we run one of the most successful investment real estate companies in the country. So where did you get the money to buy even those cheap properties when you were bankrupted and you bankrupted your family? Were you going back to your old business owner friend? No. So actually how I did that was I was working in comedy and I was doing sketch comedy. And every time I would do one of those videos that would do well, I'd make like $30,000. And so I was just taking the money from entertainment and putting it into getting my feet back into the real estate game. Cause it was always essentially where I wanted to be. And that's how that all happened. So you didn't suck as bad at comedy as you say, then if you guys got paid for it, there's that's a lot of them out there that don't get paid anything. That's true. I didn't suck terribly, but I... uh, So you were no Joe Rogan. I get it. No, no, I was no Joe Rogan. And I wish I was. That dude's Um, making bank on his podcast and pissing people off every day. It's a pretty good life he's got. He's a hero. He's a hero to me. I love the guy. I think he's just fantastic. I do too. He says whatever he wants to say. God bless him for it. Yep, yep. So what do... uh, How did Key Glee come out of all that? So Key Glee came about because... I moved back to Phoenix in 2012. I moved to Phoenix, not back to. I moved to Phoenix in 2012. And I start understanding the hustle of the model, right? So I'm, I start getting deals under contract and I need buyers, right? I need people to help me perform on these deals. And so my two business partners, Josiah and Hunter, they are way much younger than I am. Josiah at the time was like 23 years old and Hunter was 18. Perfect. Yes. And they are way, way smarter than I am. And these two guys, they got the hustle. They got it. They got it. They not only have the hustle, but the two of them together were just amazing at being able to help me exit my contracts. Right. And so I was really good at getting the deals. They were amazing at selling the deals. And it just was a natural fit that we all got together and we formed the company. It was tough for me. I got to say, I'm 41 years old right now, right? So at the time, I'm in my late 30s and there's these two essential kids. Whippersnappers. That's what we call them, these whippersnappers. Whippersnappers come to the table with all of this computer mumbo jumbo and knickknacks, how they can help me really scale this and make this a thing. And I had to... I ultimately had to like look myself in the mirror and say, if you can't get over yourself and align with guys that are smarter than you and are doing something at a level that you're not able to accomplish, then that's you. And I saw that and I had the self-awareness to be able to know that I had to get over that ego thing. And I partnered with these two guys that have ultimately 
we've changed each other's lives. It's great. That's the way it's supposed to be. So what's next for Keegley? What's the vision? So as I mentioned, we were franchising. We're just under the FDD process and getting that all approved takes time. And so we're in that stage right now, hoping that we get approval by March, April. And franchising is what's next, right? So we're going to be in every market. And I hope that your listeners see a Keegley sign or email or home within the next six months is my goal. But I got dibs on Charlotte people, so back off. Yeah. So if you're in Charlotte, you're going to have to go to Lee for all of your wholesale deals. For a job, I will have to hire some young hustlers because I'm too old to go running around town. I'll just have to have some, a little Hunter and a little Josiah around here. You can, and you can make them wear little cute outfits too. I expect them to wear suits with neckties and pocket squares. That's what I meant. meant. That's what I meant. (laughs) All right. So Jamil, if people want information about how to reach out to you to ask you questions, to find out about Keegley, what's the best contact information? Or should I just put it in the show notes? Because you and I know they won't write anything down anyway. Well, let's do both because I want to give an offer to your uh, listeners. So if any of you guys are out there listening, hearing me say, I think I could do that. How do I make that work? Or if you are wholesalers and you're having trouble scaling, reach me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at J-D-A-M-J-I, at J-D-A-M-J-I. So that's J-D-A-M-J-I. Follow me on Instagram, DM me, and I'm offering an hour of consultation from my team. So if you want to figure out how to wholesale, what that looks like, what techniques, what marketing angles, just send me a DM and I will give you an hour of my staff or myself's time to really evaluate if this is something that is for you. Hang on. So what's your Instagram handle one more time? So it's J-D-A-M-J-I. J-D-A-M-J. There you are. I will follow you. I got more followers than you do. You do. I have to admit, I did a little research on you and I looked at your page. You know what? When I did though, I said, I'm you really need to excited. smile more. Your feed is kind of snarly looking. It's, you no, it's, my, it's my dumb face. When I start those videos, I don't start with a smile. I get, you're right. I got to do better. This one looks like you smelled a fart and maybe you were in the investment house. I don't know. Is that, is that... <laughs> I'm going to take your advice and I'm going to smile in the beginning of all my videos. You're going to see a real fun cheese. And you'll know that you were the reason for it, Lee. All right. So let's see. Let me make your, let's do a picture for our story here now that I'm following you. You weren't following me, though. I'm not going to take it I, I, should have, I followed you last night, Lee. No, I think you followed my company account. I'm way more fun on my personal account because okay. that's how this stuff works. All right. So people, you should reach out. That's an amazing opportunity. You won't get that anywhere else because frankly, and Jamil can back me up on this, most wholesalers or people who are flipping do not like to give their secrets away because they think that there is only so much to go around. But that is the attitude of scarcity. We live in the world of abundance where there's plenty to go around because if you have the hustle, you really don't have any competition nowadays. So Jamil, thank you for coming on the show, telling your story, telling about Keegley. I'm excited to watch your growth and to find out more about what I can do to bring it to Charlotte with my company. And y'all follow up with him, take advantage. And I look forward to meeting you in person at some point. Absolutely. Have a great day. Hey, listen, guys, don't worry about what you didn't write down. Michelle is amazing. She's going to put everything in the show notes for this episode. So you slackers can just click on it and send us back some love. The way that you show love, subscribe, give me five stars, and we'll make sure to see you next time on the show. As always, I'm so super thrilled that you joined in for more crazy shit. And if you are a realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular human being who happens to have an unbelievable story that you need to tell the world about, or frankly, you just need to one of the story you just heard, then make sure to DM me on Instagram at Lee Thomas Brown or tweet me at Lee Brown or frankly any social network where you hang out. I'm there. And if you have some fun, then you totally want to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. 